Well, hello there and welcome to the Bathroom of the Dollhouse for another reading and quasi-comprehensive commentary on The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers for January 15th, the day of heroic inevitability. All right, how's that for a mouthful of a title of a day? Uh, and here at the top of the page uh, is a visual representational image of uh, heroic inevitability. We have us an image of well, what could it be? Well, boom, it looks to be some angel's wings with a uh, highly stylized rope between the two. With some tassels on the bottom there. That's right. Does that speak to the day of heroic inevitability? Hey, maybe so, maybe so. A saving angel, if you like. Uh, that having been said, not altogether all too important. Just want to give you an idea what I'm seeing on the page here. Uh, but that being said, what is important is it's January 15th, and hence it's somebody's birthday. So me wishing you... Happy birthday. That's what's important. Uh, that hasn't been said. Sometimes these videos find folks late, and if that's the case, well, I hope you had a happy birthday. Uh, that being said, a lot of times folks also join us randomly, or more ideally, to celebrate the January 15th uh, birthday. So if that's the case, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before I dive in direct with the birthday read, something I like to do around these here parts, and that's roll some dice. This is the Diecast birthday broadcast, so I like to live up to the namesake, but I do so more importantly for synchronicity's sake. And here I rolled a three and a four for a seven. Now, what is synchronicity? You're more than likely wondering. Well, my friends, a lot of times we get out in this world and we're very laser of focus. We got the blinders on to kind of what's going on around us. So, I mean, we might, we might see the things, but we don't necessarily give them all that much concern as we're off on the commute to work or just chasing after some errands. And why is this important? Well, as I've heard it told, the universe will put things in our path to help us realize our goals or manifest our aspirations. But if you got the blinders on, you might miss the things it's putting out there for you. So this is a little bit of an experiment or an exercise to help you identify the things the universe is ostensibly putting down for you by figuring out a sign that we can't help but notice. Something that we agree upon with the universe. That's that's right, your daily numbers, your three and your four, four is seven. Now you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you, the intention is there. Uh, but that having been said, it's probably ideal you take your own set of dice. Raid that Yahtzee game that you never play. That's right. So you can ascribe directional values to number sets as well as time limits with which to go in those directions. But once you have all that established, I don't know, pick a place out you like to go to or maybe one you've never been to before, like the town square maybe. Maybe you just haven't gotten out there in the town square. So get on out there and then uh, get your directional value and a time limit ready and then head on out. That's right, go after it. But that being said, like I said, get those blinders off. You never know, the day might start to take on a theme. The universe might start showing you things that aren't necessarily in your numbers there. To say, I don't know, let's go with the visual representational image there, angel's wings. Now obviously you're probably not gonna see the literal thing, though you might, depending upon how strange your town might be, or you know, maybe someone's wearing their Halloween costume out, Who's to say? But it could be a sticker up on the side of a transformer box. That's right. You know, those slap taggers like to put some interesting things up there. Uh, or, you know, maybe you see somebody wearing a robe with a tassel of rope around the waist. Hey, who's to say? Ropes are everywhere, right? But I'm just saying, these are the kinds of things that might just start to present in odd places. And uh, I would say it's an indication that you're on the right path. The universe is sending you in a place that it wants you to go or take notice of things or it's just verifying it's with you there. So that having been said, maybe you take off and maybe uh, on this first leg, you see nothing. You get to the end of your time limit, you didn't see anything out of the ordinary or that it was in line with some kind of synchronicity or coincidence. That said, just take a step back, compose yourself, take in your surroundings, uh, a little bit of a meditation if you like. Maybe you just so happen to notice the street you're on is 7th Avenue. Hey, it could be, all right? These things kind of go by us because we're not really looking for them. So that's just an example of the little things to be on the lookout for. That said, I'd take that as, a, as an example that you're on the right path. Roll yourself another time value directional, uh, or <laughs> a time limit directional value. Maybe by the end of that, the old uh, uh, car pulls up and maybe it just so happens to have the word seven on the uh, license plate there or paint it on the hood. Again, something else to take note of. Maybe uh, use the uh, direction that that car is going as is, is the example to go in. So roll a time limit. See where it takes you. 
I don't know, maybe at the end of that time value, you find yourself in front of a building with, who's to say, a 34 in the address. Well, you know what? Take a, take a chance there. Go, see if you can go into that building, see what's in there. Maybe it just so happens to be some kind of a store. I don't know, a costume shop, perhaps. That could be. Maybe they just so happen to have angel costumes on sale, on clearance. I don't know. It might just be right up front there. I, you know, it sounds a little bit harebrained, but the, like I said, the day might take on a theme. So in any event, this just, these are just examples of things that might start to present if you uh, just get out there to try and see, taste, touch, intuit a little bit of the magic that the universe might have in store for you if you're open to looking. Now, like I said, I know it probably might not change your life, but uh, hey, you know what? So it's an opportunity to get out there and do something fun on your birthday all right and if there's anything i can hope you on your birthday it's that you see taste touch feel and intuit a little bit of magic so i think you get the idea of the daily numbers there let's get on with the birthday read your month is january your day is the 15th your sign is 23 to 26 degrees capricorn of the capricorn three period specifically and your quality and element is cardinal earth all right january 15th the day of heroic inevitability those born on january 15 inevitably encounter a theme of heroism in their lives and it is incumbent on them at some point in time to find their fearless center and after discovering it rely on it thereafter in crisis and stress situations now, often those born in this day are unaware of their heroic nature until fate calls upon a challenge, which reveals it in full flower. And up to this time, it is quite likely that they lead a fairly moderate, perhaps ordinary life. And uh, the event or events that lead to this self-actualization are likely to occur in their late 20s. In January 15th, people often manifest some form of hero worship or other romantic fixation in their childhood with a real or fantasy figure. And this person may even be the one or may even be one of their parents, uh, but more likely it is a surrogate to whom they are drawn. Assuming the role of hero or heroine can uh, be like an act of initiate, initiation, a rite of passage for January 15 individuals, and they may have difficulty furthering their development until it has taken place. And some born on this day only fulfill such a destiny when they themselves become parents and occupy a heroic place in their own children's eyes. January 15 people may or may not be social individuals, but they are magnetically drawn to certain key figures in their early 30s who not only inspire them but also aid them in their process of self-discovery. These guides, teachers, or mentors usually have a profound influence on their career. Love, or at the very least, deep friendship and affection usually figure predominantly in this relationship. Expressing rebelliousness is a key part of a maturing, or of maturing rather, for January 15th children and young adults. They feel unfairness very keenly and therefore are ready to fight against any form of oppression or intolerance which they may encounter. And many born on this day have an agreeable, even innocent exterior which belies their inner strength. And those who attempt to take advantage of January 15th people because they suspect them of weakness, naivete, or gullibility will have quite a surprise in store for them. And January 15th people learn quickly from their experiences and generally subscribe to the saying, Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. In January 15, people must be aware of their tendency to allow those who hurt them access to their inner circle. On the other hand, they must not build an iron wall around themselves after having been betrayed or humiliated. And finding a balance between openness and security is a real challenge. 
Finally, January 15, people must beware of giving themselves over to sensual pleasures, for which they have a weakness. And at times, their energy can get sidetracked into matters unworthy of their consideration. They should also temper their desire to control their environment and remain open to evolutionary growth as well as change. Well, all right, a rather narrow focused birthday breakdown to be sure, but I would say within that narrow focus, they really expanded it out in scope. And this has been a bit of a through line here for uh, the Capricorn period. Uh, that having been said, uh, let's dive into some notes. I mentioned I'd like to write a little of a commentary at the beginning there. So let's dive into what I had to say. See if we can make some connections there with other, other days in the month and uh, what, anything else that might be of interest here. So let's dive in. January 15th, the day of heroic inevitability. Uh, you're said to inevitably encounter heroism in your life, and the reading claims it's important for you to find your heroic side, and after doing so, to incorporate it into your life for when the time comes when it's needed. And that will inevitably come, it's, apparently it says. Uh, so first impressions, I can't say the reading has ever conveyed such a definitive prediction of one's future. Uh, and if they have, it certainly wasn't conveyed with such a definite or a definitive rather predictions of one's future. And at least it's not the way they've done so here. So it's very interesting. They did it as, as if it's almost a guarantee for as much. It's also interesting that it's something so oddly specific, all right, and uh, which incorporates some high stakes, it sounds like. Uh, so it's quite the novel, uncharacteristic thing to lead the reading off with. That's what I'm trying to say here. It's not typical at all. All right, it's basically a call to action. All right, and having said that, the uh, reading claims you have a certain amount of uh, hero worship baked in during your childhood. And assuming such a role can be uh, like a rite of passage, uh, they said. So uh, in no small part, uh, looking at it in this way, I'm much more of the mind to see it as an otherwise believable claim. All right. Let's get that if it's baked in in your childhood there. It's because it's much more grounded and believable in that respect uh, from parents or teachers and such. Uh, something you may in fact manifest for yourself even if such concerns are only idealized afterthoughts. Maybe you're not even thinking about it, but you're, you're building it up in yourself. Uh, matter of fact, I could see such a dynamic applying to a lot of people in that respect. So they, now it starts to seem a little more generalized there. Uh, but it's interesting that such a seemingly random and specific human concern is what colors the theme of your day hasn't presented anywhere else, all right? Uh, but themes of heroism aren't the only thing the breakdown focuses on, as a magnetic draw to people who aid you in self-discovery is also mentioned. Uh, but though it does seem kind of connected though, doesn't it, <laughs> in retrospect. Uh, but perhaps more notable in this respect is it's said to happen to you in your 30s, which seems rather late in life, I would say. Um, and this, there's also this theme of rebellion uh, that's said to present uh, as a key to your development uh, in your younger years. And to include a strong aversion to intolerance, a feeling for unfairness, an innocent exterior, an inner strength, and an aptitude to learn from your experiences. And also an apparent weakness for the sensual pleasures. All right. Uh, uh, many of which seem quite antithetical to the typical Capricorn traits, interestingly enough. So you're a little bit of an oddity in that respect. Uh, but it does seem to be right in line with the ideas that Capricorns are typically hard to pin down. They give astrologers a little bit of a, of a difficulty to try to make their predictions uh, from what I've gathered here and other places in the book. And so I would say that you kind of buck a lot of the trends there that, uh, that keep in that through line. At least the typical through lines with Capricorns. Um, so uh, it's uh, what I was saying. Very interesting breakdown insofar as it was narrowly focused again. Uh, but because of your personality and extremely expansive to that end, I don't know. It's just really interesting day, especially with such a uh, uh, specific thing to focus on. I found it really interesting. Uh, that having been said, uh, that's what I'd say about your breakdown. So let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right. Those born on the 13th of the month are ruled by the number six 
as 1 plus 5 equals 6. And by the planet Venus, those ruled by the number 6 tend to be charismatic and sometimes even inspire worship in others. There we go. However, for January 15th, people, the combined influence of Venus and Saturn, which is Capricorn's ruler, lends a very complex emotional nature that can spell problems and frustrations in relationships. Often deep-seated conflict with one parent has to be worked out before further growth is possible. All right, this was a rather quick down and dirty numbers and uh, planets entry, but they personalized it here for you to some extent, though I might be getting ahead of myself if I say much else. So let's dive back into the notes here uh, for your numbers and your planets. All right, uh, the number six in the planet Venus uh, for charisma and worship from others. All right, but thanks to the constrictive planet Saturn, a complex emotional nature, perhaps owing to what seems like an empathetic bend, uh, at least considering what was said in the breakdown there. Uh, but apparently this lends to a complex emotional nature specifically. Uh, Saturn has a penchant for causing conflict and frustration with a lot of the other planets. Uh, so it's almost not a surprise that this presents for you here. Uh, but, you know, somehow it's perhaps that Saturn speaks to structure, taking responsibility for one's actions, strong personal values, and a need to exert authority, uh, which is apparently just a little too conservative for the uh, Venus type qualities there. So it might exert a little bit of frustration and conflict there for you. Um, that is, if you're to lean into uh, astro astrological reasons why you're confronting such things. Um, that having been said, uh, if you do run into such frustrations, hey, maybe that's why. Um, but what else do we have here? Those things, um, it was interesting they brought up the parent dynamic, that you might have some unresolved issues. That is not a characteristical thing that they'll drop in on the numbers and planets. I would say that's kind of a, uh, a generalized type idea. But again, that's, uh, that's not something that typically comes up. So uh, a lot of times it might just apply. So maybe take note. Um, that having been said, that's what I had to say about your numbers and planets. Gave a little bit more of an idea what, what Saturn does, perhaps how it influences this, uh, human this love of humanity that's baked in with Venus and maybe why there's a little bit of conflict in there. So hopefully that provided a little bit of value, a little bit extra context there for you. So, but that having been said, let's move on to your tarot. That's right. One of the more eclectic of the New Age metaphysical ideologies. Not a lot of people lend it much credence. Myself, I don't know much about it either. But uh, hey, it's in the book. It's your birthday. A lot of times we can make some more connections. It's interesting to see how it may or may not line up with the breakdown. So let's dive in. All right. The 15th card of the Major Arcana is the devil that's right and indicates a fear desire dynamic working where sexual attraction irrationality and passion are concerned the devil enslaves us through our need for material comfort and money and he represents our base nature grasping for security he controls us through the irreconcilable differences which exist in our male female nature and a positive side of this card is sexual attraction and an expression of passionate desires. Yet the card can serve as a reminder that although we are bound to our bodies, our spirits are free to soar. In January 15th, people must avoid making others overly dependent on them or using their coercive powers in an unethical fashion. All right, hey, they personalize this one here for you a little bit. Uh, sometimes the devil doesn't uh, really do that for you. They'll just kind of convey the card and let it lie. So, even what I have to say here about your tarot, uh, the devil, it's a once a month card and you just so happen to draw it. Sometimes these cards will repeat themselves. Typically a Venus day gets the lovers, but you got the devil. So there you go. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, it's said to indicate a fear desired dynamic in respect to sexual attraction, irrationality, and passion. All right. Uh, qualities that I would say are earmarks, uh, contributing to a romantic draw towards a heroic nature, uh, even if it's unrealized by you, right? Uh, or something you don't think is, you don't even realize is going to happen, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it also has, uh, represents a grasp for security, uh, even if such thing doesn't exactly dovetail into money or material promise, I would say. 
uh, or idealistic dreams. But I think that one's more in line with this heroic nature here. Uh, so it's uh, a little bit more fuel for such extreme hero-oriented considerations there. Uh, you may uh, have to realize at some unpredictable points. Uh, just mind those that, uh, like I said, make dependent on you and your abilities and how you may influence them. You know, you don't want to be coming off like a manipulator. There's also, it made me think of that saying that like if you save a life, you're then responsible for it. Uh, I don't know, is that like an a ancient... Uh, uh, Asian wisdom kind of thing. I don't know, but it makes me think about it. So be very careful about who you save. That's right. <laughs> you may not want to be responsible for them thereafter. I don't know. Take that kind of thing in stride, I would say. But to some extent, I would, I would seem to think it applies a little bit. Uh, having said that, that's your tarot. So let's move on to your health. All right. Those born on January 15 often have problems involving the more sensual aspects of their nature. For example, those born on this day can be periodically overindulgent or averse to food and sex, symbolic of underlying emotional ambivalence. Interesting. And such problems generally result from negative childhood experiences with one or both parents. January 15, people must be careful not to use emotions as weapons or manipulative devices, particularly if and when they themselves have children. Learning to cook well is important to January 15 people in that they are thus more likely to develop a healthy attitude toward food. Sports and exercise of all types are recommended, particularly team sports that will teach them social as well as physical skills. All right, what I have to say about your health here. Very interesting health entry today. Uh, not particularly characteristic of a typical entry either. So we just keep bucking trends here left and right for you today. All right, uh, here's your health. Problems with sensual draws on account of emotional indifference or childhood influences, all right? Uh, the most indirect mention of a psychological influence in the health entry yet. Uh, psychological aspects here, they don't often uh, creep up on us, but when they do, um, a lot of times they're very direct in as much. They'll say, hey, they have psychological problems sometimes or are apt to. Here I would say, not really. They just kind of brought up the parent thing again, and uh, that's obviously a psychological type deal. Um, at least to, I, it would see uh, that having said uh, it's also such a very specific issue once again like I said doesn't often present uh, warning not to let your uh, not to pass on insecurities is also uncharacteristic they uh, usually save that kind of thing for the breakdown itself uh, your your role as a parent and uh, that in my mind kind of better rounds out a birthday breakdown um, so when they kind of avoid that stuff I like to say it's more narrow focused so here they're kind of rounding out the breakdown by incorporating more things throughout the read again not characteristic here so just keep bucking trends again uh, what else do we have here no specific diet is mentioned but that's a typical dynamic that goes on if the psychological stuff is brought up uh, but they, uh, I would say that previous Capricorns have to deal with, um, uh, what do they say for diet? They try to cut out um, animal fats, dairy fats, and uh, processed sugar and the like because uh, the veins are a Capricorn body area. And I would say they, uh, they're trying to get you to cut cholesterol out of your diet in consideration of as much. Uh, the skeleton is also a Capricorn body area. So in once an occasion, they'll bring up taking some vitamins and supplements, for, which leads me to assume calcium there. Uh, there's also joint issues. So uh, you got your chondroitin and the, uh, the other one that gets coupled with that for joints. Now, none of this comes up, but, you know, I would say it's probably worth taking, taking note of since it's presented for so many other days. Uh, what else did they mention here? Uh, sports and all kinds of exercise, specifically with a social bend to it. I didn't really pick up that you weren't necessarily social. That might have been something that was in the breakdown, but they, they generally don't bring that up unless it's to help kind of challenge you in an area you may be deficit. Um, so uh, like I said, maybe I passed over it, uh, or maybe it makes complete sense to you. Either way, they brought it up, so uh, maybe take note. Uh, having said that, that's been your health, so let's move on to some advice. All right. 
it is inevitable that you will play your heroic role. And be sure that it is in service of goals worthy to you. Be discriminating, but also open to change. Discover what works for you. Learn to wait and when to act. And find the right place and time for all things. Interesting. I would say all of these things kind of dovetail together for the same overarching uh, uh, theme there, if you like. Not characteristic once again so uh here what did i have to say about your advice i had to write it in a book and my my my, my writing is small so bear with me here it says you will be a hero all right uh more emphasis here on this one particular theme uh which is again uncharacteristic that kind of thing and it's bringing it up in this section too they don't often like reiterate something so drilled down upon uh so ensure your goals are worthy uh, even if you weren't preparing for this day uh, you're gonna need to be a hero like they said and uh, you know whether we take that to be uh, what do you call it uh, literal or figurative I would say it's great advice all right um, because your time is precious all right you should do good things with it things that are gonna help you in the future regardless of whether or not you're gonna be a hero um, and uh, your value is immeasurable also so uh, you know what we just we have to we have to look out for ourselves there and so be in service to yourself, I would say, uh, regardless of whether you become a hero or not. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, be discriminating, but open to change. So I like to think that that means learn to say no, okay? Uh, but also learn when it's appropriate to do so. A lot of the Capricorn through line is that they'll take on any job because they just, they have that capacity to be um, striving forward all the time, that they're not incapable of anything. And it starts to bog them down. It starts to build up stress. And so I would say, uh, be mindful of that. You still fall in that period, though, even though you're bucking all these trends. So you know, whether that applies or not, I don't know. I'm just assuming. But I would say that's appropriate there to, uh, also. Learn to say no. All right. Uh, sometimes it's okay to do things that you don't want to, but don't let folks abuse that. All right. What was that one here? Uh, discover what works for you. Uh, learn to wait and when to act and find the right place and the right time for things. Uh, sometimes you have to say yes to things uh, in, uh, in order to figure out what the things you want to say yes to are. Um, so and also, you might have to say yes to things so that you put yourself in the right place at the right time for the things you want to say yes to. More, not better said, if you like. Uh, so I would say, yeah, a lot of highly valuable advice today uh, for you specifically, even though we may have had to do a little bit of homework to kind of find the value in the advice or how to make it applicable. But that's just my take. Maybe you have a totally different take. Uh, that having been said, that's been your advice. So let's move on to your meditation. That's right. It's your birthday. You get a meditation. All right. In the great battles of life, the most powerful weapons are often wisdom and understanding. All right. I don't know what to make of this one for you, but hey, it's not my birthday or my meditation. So once more, the great battles of life, the most powerful weapons are often wisdom and understanding. All right, that's your meditation there for you. Like I said, I'm not going to throw some interpretation on it for you. It's just for you. It would lose the meaning if I threw my spin on it. Uh, that having been said, uh, your meditation in the can, as it were. Let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right. Let's hold up the objective mirror and see where we got the bulk, if you like, and where we're otherwise a little more uh, atrophied. All right, so your strengths, your idealistic, your pleasure-loving, and your heroic. All right, interesting. I thought these were things that were otherwise undiscovered for you. Oh, even if there's strengths inevitably. It sounded like you needed to build up to them. But hey, you know what? They're assuming you're at that place already, I guess. So you're idealistic, pleasure-loving, and heroic. But your weaknesses. Oh, let's hold up that objective mirror, but flip it to the side that blows up your face. That's right. It shows off the things you may be uh, otherwise uh, invulnerable to. Your superficial, uh, what do you call, insecurities, maybe. That's right. Your weaknesses. You're indulgent, insecure, and idolizing. Oh, that's very interesting. I, I wouldn't have thought trying to find somebody to, to uh, follow the example of or to it would be a weakness. Oh, maybe you're just supposed to do it for yourself. I don't know. Find the value in yourself, like the advice kind of said there. 
I don't know. You know, a lot of times I like to argue that these weaknesses can sometimes be strengths. It just depends on the situation. Because I have seen the weaknesses trade back and forth between strengths and weaknesses before. And, you know, even the next day sometimes there's that much of a, a weird juxtaposition. Uh, but that having been said, I, I like to also argue that if, if weaknesses are something you want to improve upon, your strengths are often going to help you get it done. Here you're idealistic and pleasure loving. I don't know that that's necessarily a strength to help you get over your weaknesses. Um, unless, you know, being insecure is one of them. Hey, getting after that pleasure love, maybe uh, maybe we can put some of our insecurities to rest. And then um, idealistic, hey, you know what you're going to dream out there. Uh, and with a dream comes a passion, all right? And you can get after getting your weaknesses under control. Uh, and heroic, hey, you're going to approach as much with a little bit of bravado, a little bit of strength, everything that gets cooked in with that, and you're going to get after the task. Uh, but your weaknesses, indulgent, insecure, idolizing, I don't really necessarily know how those are strengths, where my argument would be. Uh, but if you indulge yourself into into the, uh, the passion there, uh, you know what? We have to uh, get after things sometimes. We have to indulge ourselves. I would say that's a little bit of a strength there too, but maybe you just do it a little too much to where it doesn't serve you. And who's to say? I think the argument stands even if I couldn't come up with a very good example. But I also like to say finally with the strengths and weaknesses, don't get rid of your weaknesses altogether because they make you who you are. That's right. So with the strengths and weaknesses having been relayed, let's move on to those born on this day. And when we get into those born on this day, something I like to do is look at it through the prism of figuring out our passions. It's interesting to see who shares your company for sure, to so what lottery we drew. But I think it's important that we're getting after life uh, with a purpose, to find something that uh, we get out of bed eager to do each day. Because a lot of times I meet folks in the world and ask them what they do, and more importantly, if they like it, and they don't. And I think it's just because they haven't had the opportunity to put in the time or the work to figure out their passions. Or if they have done as much, they don't know how to make it financially viable, which also requires a little bit of time and effort or a little bit of thinking on how to do as much. And so I think this is the perfect opportunity to not only see shares of company, but what they did to get in the book. And maybe we can take some inspiration on how to drum up our own, uh, the embers of our fires there, get things going. Because if there's anything I can hope for somebody, especially on their birthday, it's that they're driving after figuring out their passions. So we should be doing backflips out of bed to get on with the things we find just enjoyable in life, right? So in any event, you get the idea, so let's get after it. Those born on this day. Let's see how many heroes there were, all right? Martin Luther King Jr., the American Nobel Peace Prize winning civil rights leader, a pastor, founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and sadly, assassinated. We also have Joan of Arc, the uh, French visionary saint, military leader, and burned at the stake. Um, I forgot about that aspect of it. Uh, we have Gamil Abdul Nassar, an Egyptian president. Uh, Moliere, a uh, French playwright of Les Misanthropes. Um, we have Edward Teller, a Hungarian nuclear physicist and an A-bomb developer, it says. Pierre Joseph Pradhan, a revolutionary socialist and an anarchist. Aristotle Onassis, the Greek shipping magnet. We also have Mario Von Peebles, a film actor, director, and responsible for New Jack City and Posse. We also have Gene Krupa, jazz drummer of the Benny Goodman Band. We also have Cardinal John O'Connor, a New York Catholic leader. Uh, Lloyd Bridges, the film TV actor and father of Bo and Jeff. We also have Thomas Cole Younger, 19th century desperado, it says. Uh, Saud Ibn Abdul, a Saudi Arabian king. Hugh Trevor Roper, a British historian uh, responsible for The Last Days of Hitler, a book, I'm assuming. And we also have uh, um, Li Tang Hu, uh, H-U-I, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that one, a Taiwanese prime minister. We have Franz uh, Grill Parzer, an Austra uh, Austrian playwright. Captain Beefheart, a rock musician, singer, and songwriter. We also have Margaret O'Brien, a film actress. Uh, Maria Schell, Viennese-born stage and film actress. And uh, Stanislaw Wyspiniewski, a Polish painter, poet, 
and a dramatist. Now, I know I butchered a few names in there for sure today, uh, so let's do some butchering on my side of things to make up for it. It's not done in malice, just hooked on phonics, doesn't often work for me there. Uh, I will say we had a couple heroes in there that I recognize, but like they said in the book there, sometimes it could just be um, the the the, uh, the role that you fulfill for other individuals, like to say your children if you have some. Uh, so maybe that's how it applied for those uh, some of those folks in there. Uh, but that having been said, hey, uh, I know it's hard to take inspiration from other people's accomplishments. And, you know, those things might not have even have been their passion per se. But uh, once again, maybe me just putting a bug in your ear about it help you stir up the fires there because like i said if there's anything i can hope you on your birthday it's that you're out there carving out the time and putting in the effort to figure out your passions and if you already have some well hey that you're either living them to the fullest or that you're getting after how to make them financially viable so you can segue out of the things you don't like to do uh, that having been said that essentially rounds out your birthday read except to say your season is winter your sign once again is capricorn of the capricorn three period specifically and your quality and elements is cardinal earth now what does that mean that's a different video altogether i'll leave it at the end there for you if you're interested but this has been january 15th the day of heroic inevitability from the secret language of birthdays by gary goldschneider and you stelfers i have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in picking up a copy and getting through it and diving in further with uh, a little bit more quickness than i could provide for you uh, but you know what this makes a great coffee table book if you're throwing a party or something you need to get the ice broken the conversation started it's gonna do that for better or for worse all right get the party started for sure uh, that having been said, the book being relayed, not altogether all too important. Not when it's January 15th, and like I said at the beginning, it's somebody's birthday. So once again, what's important here, wishing you a happy birthday. But for everybody else who joined us randomly, hey, I hope you enjoyed yourselves, found something of value, and you're getting excited to join us for your birthday read as well. Um, and uh, lest I forget, that's right, your daily numbers. Get out there, let the universe show you it's with you on your path there. Because if there's anything I can hope for you, it's that you're getting the blinders off, seeing the things that the universe is putting in your path to help you realize your goals and aspirations. Or you're just getting out there and getting your steps in, all right? You got to do something exciting on your birthday, I'd argue, and even if it's just that, getting your steps in. Uh, when it, so that having been said, all together, I just want to thank you for the pleasure of your time and uh, allowing me the privilege to share and celebrate your birthday. So... Happy birthday once again, and take care of yourselves.